Good day and welcome to our webinar on frictionless shopping technology and how it improves customer experience. Today, as businesses are starting to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, frictionless shopping technology, especially walk-in, walk-out technology, is seeing tremendous interest both with shoppers and with retail operators. Today, in our session, we are going to explore how frictionless shopping technology can alleviate some of the barriers that have come up as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic and the shift in consumer behavior. And we will talk about the technologies that go into enabling this powerful alternative as well. I'm excited to welcome three panelists who have a range of experience and expertise from industry, technology, and academic research. Let me introduce them to each of you. Ken Bollock is the IT and retail technology leader at Retail Business Services and Ahul Delhi's company. Ken, do you want to uh, say hello? Uh, yes, thanks, Krishna. Uh, currently working at Retail Business Services, uh, giving a little bit of background, I've been with the uh, broader Ahold Del Hayes uh, USA group of companies for the past 22 years, uh, spanning time in store operations through marketing, merchandising, store strategy and execution, retail operations, and the last uh, 12 years or so within the IT teams. Currently transitioning from leading our innovation teams to leading our customer engagement teams, as you were framing earlier. Uh, but thanks for the introduction. Thanks, Ken, and uh, welcome to today's discussion. Uh, the next panelist is Dr. Erika Strandberg, and she is the Executive Director of Research Initiatives at Stanford's AI Lab. Erika? Hi, everyone. Um, it's nice to, to meet you all. Um, in part, my role at Stanford is to help companies like UST Global engage in innovative and transformative research in AI. Um, and we're seeing more and more companies bringing AI into supply chain management, customer understanding, warehouse robotics, drone delivery, and other forms of frictionless shopping. <clears throat> I'd like to thank UST Global for inviting me to be part of this discussion, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks, Erika, and we are looking forward to it as well. Uh, and then uh, we have Mahesh Atalye, who is the go-to-market leader for frictionless shopping at UST Global. Mahesh? Thank you, Krishna. And thank you, everyone, for joining this webinar. My name is Mahesh Atalye, and I, I'm the go-to-market leader. And part of my role at UST Global, I'm helping clients to adopt this frictionless technology to improve customer experience and their ROI. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Mahesh. So uh, for those of you who have uh, questions, uh, please do post them in the chat window. Um, our goal is to be able to get to at least some of those questions uh, before the end of today's uh, webinar. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the topic obviously on everyone's mind today is uh, COVID-19 and how that is going to start to impact customer experience especially uh, in the retail context. Um, today, if you think about it, you know, delivering the best customer experience has always been uh, a top priority for retailers. But with the pandemic and changing uh, behaviors, consumer behaviors, there is an enormous amount of curiosity around what a frictionless shopping experience can look like, especially around the, the walk-in, walk-out type of technologies that we're going to be talking about today. And this is of uh, very much of interest both with uh, consumers and uh, with retail operators. Uh, for all of us, uh, we really don't enjoy the prospect of uh, waiting in line at a store at any given point in time anyway. And with some of the spread of COVID-19 and some of the health concerns that are on shoppers' minds today, there is even less of interest in being able to stand in those lines. And retail operators have seen a drop uh, in, in people who, uh, who are, are seeing an increase in the cart abandonment uh, when they have these lines that start to get a little bit longer. 
and, and uh, reducing those lines and improving that experience is an important aspect for most, most retail operators. So I'd like to um, you know, pose the first question to Ken. Uh, Ken, are you seeing that uh, consumers are starting to react differently uh, through these unprecedented times uh, to the frictionless stores that you've already started to deploy? That's, that's a great question, Krishna. In addition, I think you framed certain elements fairly well. Uh, but before jumping right to that, if you had asked me what was that driving factor or our ambition to launch originally, it would have been looking for that convenience format where we can bring healthy options to folks, that standard product price promotion mix. How do we uh, get to that convenient location with an unparalleled convenience of having customers simply walk in, take an item off the shelf and walk out? Given recent circumstances, it certainly brings a new lens to this. Um, the fact that the customer doesn't need to interact with the touchscreen or even interact with a payment terminal. There are no belts or platforms they need to place their items down on, which now is a concern for everyone as they're trying to interact with the fewest number of touch points possible, um, being concerned for their own safety. Clearly, stores are doing everything they can to prevent any concern, but it always weighs on folks' mind. Uh, they want to have the fewest touch points. It's more of a desire now more than it was in the past. We're certainly seeing this uh, be just as important as that ease of shopping and convenience we had originally sought out to achieve. Yeah, and I think uh, what you highlighted there is uh, a very important point, Ken. I think this is the direction that a lot of retailers uh, were moving. And I think the, the benefits of the technology have become even more uh, apparent in, in today's environment. But you also brought up a very important point here. We all keep talking about how, you know, almost any company is a technology company in today's environment. And, you know, retailers to a large extent uh, are no exception. There has always been a, a lot of technology deployed into, um, into the retail environment. Uh, UST, um, as, as a business, has um, always built purpose-built solutions that are very targeted towards uh, you know, solving retail problems. But what I'd like to do is uh, maybe talk a little bit more about the shopping experience itself. And um, you know, I'd like to pose maybe the next question to Mahesh here. Mahesh, uh, how does the walk-in, walk-out uh, shopping deliver a superior experience, uh, especially within the new normal? Thanks, Krishna. The, the new normal environment, as all of us are going through, uh, you know, as customers are facing, and they're looking at shopping options are very limited. So it's all about accessibility, convenience, and as Ken mentioned, most importantly, safety. So with UST's walk-in, walk-out solution, customers can you know, access the store anytime, 24 by 7, which offers more flexibility for people. I think consumers who are willing to try uh, new options will find this convenience of frictionless stores definitely a better shopping experience. And that will also forge more loyalty for retailers. Yeah, if I can jump in, um, I definitely agree that in our new normal, customers are really concerned about their personal risk and the risk of those in their communities. Um, and human behavior is very pattern forming. So you can actually, you know, it's pretty straightforward to use AI technology to detect these patterns. But the big challenge is doing this in a safe, fair and equitable way and developing responsible and trustworthy AI. And that's something that academia is very, very interested in doing. Yeah, and I think that's a great point, uh, Erica. I think uh, in, in all of these circumstances, it's really about understanding consumer behavior and, and being able to adapt uh, the business uh, to be able to uh, respond most effectively to uh, some of those changes in behavioral trends uh, that we are observing as well. And, and I think now is uh, now is the time we are seeing uh, you know, quite a dramatic shift there. So on that topic, I think, Ken, uh, this is something that uh, I'd love to get your views on as well. Uh, so when you, from when you first launched the frictionless stores, have you noticed any differences in terms of the, the consumer, the shopping habits themselves? We really expected uh, with the launch, Adoption based on, on perhaps two primary factors. One was 
being focused in a convenient location with how those healthy food options you heard me mention earlier. And the second was uh, the ease of shopping. Part of it was a lot of the mystery around this new shopping trend, but as people experienced it, they returned because of this simplicity of being able to walk in and walk out with their item. Um, we, looking at this and, and given the current uncertainty, the solution also gave us that convenience of 24 by seven uh, support, the ability to keep doors open on a convenient solution overnight that sometimes we wouldn't have been able to do in the past, where customers are able to rely on us to charge them fairly. Um, the trips now are a bit different too. Uh, in the past with a larger format store, as a retailer, we're focused on basket size. And the reality is we look at the measurement here a bit differently. Um, and now with a convenience location, you're not necessarily, everybody wants to know how to get one more item in a basket, of course, but uh, basket size is just as important as trips. If you're convenient and easy to use, the folks nearby will come and get you when they need you. And because they don't have to wait in a line, they know they can simply walk in and walk out and grab that item in the few minutes they have to spare on a break or on a lunch, uh, which, which also accelerates a bit of a different perspective for us in the solution. Yeah, and, and, and I think you know we can definitely expect uh, some level of shift uh, that we will continue to see as uh, the technology gets more widespread as well. But uh, we've been talking uh, around you know the ease of the experience, but uh, I'd like to maybe make a small shift and talk about some of the, the technologies themselves that uh, that enable that. So, uh, you know, I'd love to get your perspective, Ken, in terms of you know as you have retailers starting to think about you know deploying this uh, frictionless shopping technology, what advice would you have for them, uh, and and what would you uh, have as the key considerations for them to deploy it right now? Yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes it can be uh, intimidating when you're talking about a fairly complex set of technologies, but the reality is we had launched our first location in under eight weeks. Now, certainly that doesn't mean there was an effort. We had a very focused team to help uh, bring that to life, but uh, eight weeks is fairly quick by any standard uh, for the launch of a location of this nature, and not only technology, but goods and services as well. Uh, the flexibility here of retrofitting any space really allowed us to pick whatever location we saw fit. Uh, so that also helped us fit that uh, pretty quickly to best suit our needs. And it, it was really interesting to see how this technology enabled that hyper convenient shopping uh, across, so as we look to the future, how does that expand across the entire retail landscape? Um, that's what we're eager to see, not, not just the application and convenience for us now, uh, but how will others choose to use it and, and where will we see this proliferating in the environment? And I think, Ken, that's a, that's a valid point to, to the really see once you are ready, once the retailer or operators are ready with all the uh, uh, logistic and, you know, the infrastructure. But I think the, the most important point is the understanding the whole technology and how that works and how it makes it easy. It also involves uh, computer vision based cameras and sensors. This is like a specialized process and all that need to work in alignment with the entire AI ML based platform. What we've seen it in actually making sure that all the products are registered, all the systems are tested very well so that the specific inventory has been you know, listed. But to the customer, ultimately it's a seamless experience. You can simply walk in, pick up an item and walk out. It's that easy. And, and there's a lot of innovative AI research happening right now around retail technologies that will continue to evolve how people shop and how stores manage their supply chains. Um, more of this will find its way into commercial solutions like fr frictionless shopping. Um, I th certainly think that now is a great time to implement these sorts of technologies. But as I mentioned before, it's important to understand the biases and the data that you use to train these systems like how AI addresses situations where maybe it doesn't have as much data or has a certain level of uncertainty, um, and also how these models evolve as, it, as they collect more data. Yeah, and, and I think uh, you know, there are obviously many aspects to the technology, uh, but, but it's also reaching the stage where it can be deployed to be able to deliver that superior experience. So we've talked you know, uh, more centered around the consumer experience itself, 
But Ken, I'd like to also get your perspective in terms of what were some of the most useful innovations uh, from the walk-in, walk-out technology that was most relevant to store operators like yourself? Yeah, from a store operation perspective, um, we've always had a decent amount of information on, on what sold and approximately when it sold. But this brings it to a new level, exactly when an item's taken off a shelf. Um, that's certainly a level of detail we haven't had before. Uh, it, having that real-time inventory and knowing what customers have at any point enables a, a very ease of shopping experience because as you pick them up and, and walk out with them, you're, you're simply charged as a consumer. But as an operator, that also means uh, we have exact timing of, of when somebody had removed that item um, or when they had put it back and maybe changed their mind. Uh, it also allows for us to focus rather than pulling reports and making sure we have that right inventory uh, that customers would expect at any time, uh, given that this is streamlined, to focus more on the customer service elements. So a lot of the back office type functionality um, isn't as paperwork heavy, and now it's all simple, simple and easy to use, allowing us to focus where it really counts, and that's on our customers. And if I may jump in, Ken, I think the, in, along with the innovation uh, as technology advances, certain things are very table stake. You know, like privacy is a bigger deal. You know, I think consumers are really concerned right now, especially with all the technology innovation that is coming to market around you know COVID-19, especially when it comes to financial transaction, personal identification information. It's very critical. So. As a global company, we have taken a unified approach uh, to build into the compliance and security policies, particularly for highly regulated industries like retail. And I'm happy to say that USD's walk-in, walk-out solution is fully compliant with GDPR and PCI. Thanks, Mahesh. And I think that's a very important factor um, you know, in terms of uh, how consumers are going to react to some of these technologies as well. But we've been uh, kind of talking, you know, a lot about the underlying technologies, uh, you know, that have been implemented as part of the solution. Maybe it's time to dig in a little bit deeper and understand, for example, you know, how the whole elements of the computer vision and the cameras and how all the technologies uh, work together uh, to bring these solutions to life. Uh, so, Erica, would love to get some of your perspectives on what you're seeing there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a number of areas in AI research that will be particularly important as this kind of technology involves. Um, one big area is actually what we call AI safety, which involves um, validating and ensuring that these black box models perform how you expect them to, and that they can explore sort of unknown, unseen spaces in a safe, reliable way. Um, another area is at the intersection of AI and causal inference, and this has already been applied to, to shopping um, and understanding uh, consumer behavior. Um, and there's been a lot of recent advances in understanding how situations would have changed had customers made different purchases. Uh, there's also a number of advances um, that have happened or are coming in reinforcement learning that will be particularly important if these systems are intended to learn and evolve as new data is collected. And finally, developing models that can compute at the edge can review, reduce the amount of sensitive private data that has to be uploaded or transferred to the cloud. So there's a lot of really fun stuff going on. Um, definitely exciting new technologies that everyone should expect to see. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear my kids screaming in the background. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that, that's today's reality. And uh, I, I think you also talked a little bit uh, along the way about um, you know these learning models themselves. So how hard is it to train some of these AI models for retail and, and how accurate are they? It somewhat depends on the kind of qu and quality of the data that's available. So one of the advantages of using methods like computer vision is that there's often a lot of information available from recorded video. But that said, much of it isn't labeled and that can be a human intensive pro process. And also there are many situations where you have a lot of streaming data but you have to be able to tease out the signal from the noise. Um, there's a lot of recent research that's been focusing on that as well. Um, with regard to accuracy, it also depends on the quality and biases in the training data. And without actively addressing those biases, these models can um, actually make things worse. So it's important uh, to be responsible in, in using them and continually assess their accuracy as well as the quality of the data that's coming in um, and ensure that bias isn't being amplified. 
Yeah, and I, I think that's a that's an important consideration that goes into building any of the solutions today. Uh, so on that note, uh, my hope, uh, you know, these vision algorithms themselves, uh, is that something that customers can fool? I mean, can they kind of take uh, things out of the store and uh, kind of not get tracked? <laughs> yeah, actually, it sounds like that, you know, uh, I suppose there is always a way uh, to hack something. But if you look, as Erica mentioned, how these models are developed, AI-based uh, computer vision cameras work with each of these sensors on these racks. And that monitors what customer is going to take from those racks. And if they have to put it back, once they put that back, it records. So the custom, so the cameras are, you know, they don't do any facial recognition. No privacy data has been shared, but they do record some customer movements. What we have, uh, we've done studies and, uh, you know, of these systems and where one customer hands another customer, if you are with a family, family members are, you know, passing some of these atoms to each other. So with all these, even multiple people and these co complex exchanges, the system is still charges to the appropriate customer who walked in into the store with an app. So I suppose there is always a way uh, to hack uh, something or fool it. But based on the extensive studies, it's this is highly accurate and adaptive technology that is really uh, accommodating wide range of use cases. And uh, one last point is, you know, as the holistic system, frictionless shopping technology helping retailers to better manage their visible shrinkage simply by providing the near real time visibility into their inventory. What is going out of the store? It, it, yeah. Yeah, if I could jump in. Just briefly sure. before you leave that, I saw one of the questions had asked about RF and people coming in with RF bags and, and having experienced this journey with you, um, I'll just address that quickly. There is no RF tags in this store. Um, therefore, you can put it into your bag and simply walk out. Uh, as, as you were mentioning earlier, this is focusing on shelf sensors and uh, computer vision and not on RF technology. Yeah, I think that's a very important point to uh, highlight there as well, Ken. So, uh, Ken, uh, you know, uh, given the the kind of adoption that you're seeing for this frictionless uh, shopping, uh, what comes next uh, for you? Yeah, I think that in the broadest of senses, we we all realize how the convenience frictionless technology is allowing us to have. It's a clear differentiator, um, and more of the broad brush thoughts are how quickly will this proliferate across North America? Uh, clearly we've seen that in other countries across the globe where they've been experimenting in different versions for some time. Uh, the real question is um, how many different retail spaces will this uh, start to show itself in here in the next year or so? Um, we strongly believe it. I mean, when we look internally, we strongly see this as a new opportunity. Um, we will always see that place for that large grocery retail store. That's the weekly shop. That's the workhorse of our backbone. And we don't see change there. But when it comes for us to be able to operate in a new small convenience format in places we simply couldn't fit a big store before, we see a lot of opportunity for us in achieving this new convenience format while providing the seamless customer experience. Um, so that will be a, a focus for us potentially. Uh, and something we want to explore. Yeah, and and, and I think um, you know certainly uh, some of this is evolving. So uh, I think I appreciate your uh, perspectives on what's ahead. But uh, you know, Mahesh, if I were to pose the same question and and look at how do you see the evolution of the frictionless software suite, uh, could you share some views on that? Sure. As as Ken mentioned, the frictionless solutions uh, have as a very high demand in the new normal with increasing demand. We're currently working on uh, multiple uh, de multiple areas. We're developing alternate payment options. As of now, the solution offers uh, uh, app-based uh, entry, exit, and exit models. But we are developing on cash and credit card purchases because consumers expect to have these options available. There's also a lot of demand uh, to expand frictionless shopping applications. In, in cafeterias and in, in, uh, universities, as well as uh, hospitals. So uh, with specific items that are required uh, ready to uh, eat food, that should be available. So that's another area where we are 
uh, having our mixed space. Another area of opportunity is in the size of frictionless stores. As Ken, Ken mentioned, the cost of these components is typically what limits the scale, but these components are evolving and this technology is also continuing to become more cost efficient. So the future frictionless technology can be used in large format stores. Yeah, and, and I think, um, you know, to your point, in, in addition to also the retail environments, uh, I know through our UST Innovation Lab, uh, we are trying to bring some of this technology, especially around AI and computer vision to life uh, in a variety of other use cases as well. So, for example, you know, whether it's a step up uh, or a drive up pharmacy uh, type of environment or, uh, you know, just having the technology deployed uh, in, in airports and other types of environments. Uh, so I think uh, there is enormous amount of uh, adoption of these types of technologies uh, that's starting to come to life. Um, you know, in the interest of time, I want to make sure that we can at least get to, uh, you know, one or two of the audience questions. And I see an interesting one here, and uh, maybe Mahesh, it's best for you to again respond to this as well. And the question is, what makes USD walk in walkout technology different from the Amazon just walkout? This is a usual question I get it every time. And I, I don't claim to know all the proprietary features uh, that are included in Amazon system. But from what I have seen and experienced between the two systems, UST solution walk in walkout uh, is very similar in terms of using the advanced AI algorithms, computer vision cameras, and the sensor technologies. One key difference uh, you know, UST offers as an end-to-end -end solution from starting from the initial survey to set up to implementation within eight weeks of time, as you heard it from Ken also, and post go live support. So in short, walk-in walkout is a good solution for the store operators, retailers, or cafeterias. Convenience being the most important point, walk-in walkout solution gives you, you know, huge difference between the other uh, solutions offers in the market. One example is you, the consumers get a receipt within five seconds, right? They are out of the store. So no lines, simply walk in, walk out. Don't forget to shop. That's the difference. Thanks, Mahesh. And, and uh, Ken, one other question that uh, that's coming up, maybe you can uh, quickly touch on it is, uh, how big of a store can the frictionless shopping really support? Yeah, so relative to the focus for us and our needs, we really started out looking in that convenience space, as I mentioned a few times. We were looking at several hundred square feet, potentially in a few thousand. Uh, seeing what's already happening across the globe, uh, we know technologies in still numerous places in the two, three thousand square feet, and more recent and reaching up through 10,000 for that matter. And more recently, we hear um, ambitious goals across a few companies on, on reaching 30, 40,000 square feet even. Um, so it wouldn't surprise us if we don't see the continued growth. But the real difference in considerations is what customer experiences are you trying to provide? How will you sell items? And um, how does that impact the different ways people choose to shop? And certainly weighing out for us, we're, we're looking at this new market, new convenience, but the square footage uh, seems to be spanning and uh, accelerating quite quickly. Yeah, and, and I think, uh, you know, what the technology can support and like you said, the use cases are gonna be maybe a little bit, uh, you know, different and, and, and so on as well. But uh, we are almost out of time here. So uh, I do wanna quickly uh, show uh, what you're seeing on screen is uh, how you can get more information. You can send an email to the email ID uh, to get more information about the UST walk-in, walk-out solution. But I also want to take a moment here and thank our panelists. So Ken, Erica, Mahesh, uh, thank you so much for uh, your perspectives. I think this was an extremely useful, very valuable uh, session. And, uh, you know, I certainly look forward to... Uh, uh, engaging with uh, each of you as we move forward. Thanks again. And uh, we'll, with this, we'll probably end today's presentation. Thank you, everyone.